Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, K Street lobbyist, and host of Behind the Curtain, Saturday mornings at 10 on Newsmax TV. Also, Virginia Democratic delegate Mark Levine. Catch his nationally syndicated radio show, Inside Scoop, weekdays at 3 p.m. on MarkLevineTalk.com. We start with the Republican Party's nominating process. After losing ground in the delegate count to Ted Cruz in Colorado, GOP frontrunner Donald Trump called the process corrupt. Our Republican system, our Republican system is absolutely rigged. It's a phony deal. I have millions of votes more, but I also have hundreds of delegates more, but that's not the same thing to me. I think the vote is the thing that you count. Right? The vote. Trump sparred with RNC Chair Reince Priebus, who in essence told Trump to get over it. Everyone knows what the rules are. So I have to respond, though, if the party of which I'm the chairman of is getting attacked, especially when it's not true. Later, former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin, a Trump surrogate, said voters will rise up if Republican power brokers try to steal the election from Trump. Trump. Jack, what's the end game here? Well, it, it's hard to know. Priebus is looking for some kind of fame or power, but he's probably going to be remembered as the chairman who destroyed the Republican Party. I think more as opposed to Donald Trump. Well, it's I think not Trump, his fault. Trump Jack, might on. be saving the Republican Party by creating two or three new conservative parties, but I think Trump is right on the money. This but he doesn't is know rigged. the rules. This this thing in Colorado was done. A Year ago, right? Well, that, it's it's true, Morris. But you see, there's there's legality and then there's perception. The primary process took 60 years to bring in. This is this is a hard-fought part of our democratic process. You go back to the 40s, you had one or two primaries. You had everything in smoke-filled rooms. Even in the 60s, you only had a handful of primaries. If the Republican Party goes outside one of the two top delegate getters, vote getters, Trump and Cruz, and picks Paul Ryan or Rubio or something like that. I'm probably going to leave the party. I think at least half the people walk out in, in Cleveland. You have people run independent. And more than that, I think you've got two or three parties that form immediately. I think Donald Trump's a big whiner. I mean, what a crybaby. These rules, I, I, I hate to agree with Reince Priebus, but these rules were known a year in advance. And, you know, part of politics is organizing, working hard. When I ran for office, I worked hard to be first on the ballot. I mean, I had to get my papers filed first in time. The rules were there, and anyone who is organized, like supposedly businessman Donald Trump pretends to be, would have learned yeah, but the it's rules not just Colorado, and done Mark. his best okay, as he could. Jack, Jack, don't if you, you want to change the rules, Trump we thought, can talk about that. Trump thought his cult of personality would be enough to get him through this fight. He needed people on the ground with the smarts who were really the professional politicians doing the Colorado stuff. Yeah, remember, though, Morris, it's, I mean, I agree with part of that. It's not just Colorado. That's 1% of the issue. The, that's kind of a smokescreen, and Cruz is chasing a red herring with this. Trump is right in that Priebus and the Washington establishment are openly raising money against him. This is, the first, this is the first time in U.S. history that a Republican chairman or chairman of either of the major parties has intervened directly in the race to raise Wall Street money well, secretly. No, Priebus, hasn't raised raised money. Money. Trump, Priebus, Trump Priebus needed, hasn't raised money against Donald Trump, has Oh, he? my God, Trump yes. Trump needed some establishment, anti-establishment pros on his side, that's all. Now, Mark, this isn't just happening on the right. Some Democrats accuse supporters of Bernie Sanders of harassing convention or harassing convention delegates to switch sides. Is there an ethical problem here? No, he has every right to pressure people, to convince people, to persuade people. That's what the process is all about. Look, I would prefer a strict primary system. I don't even like caucuses because they reward the enthusiastic rather than the ordinary voter. I'm not a big fan of Colorado Republicans voting behind closed doors, but these were the rules. Now, maybe this will be a lesson to all of us to change the rules four years from now, but to complain and whine about them after they're already there, that's, that takes the cake. Right. Bernie Sanders is absolutely right to try to persuade delegates. I don't think he will, but he has the right to do it. Meanwhile, Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski will not be prosecuted for his confronta confrontation with the former reporter from Bright Breitbart. Jack, do you expect Trump's team to be more careful from here on out? I, I think they'll be more careful, Morris, but I mean, that the prosecutor made absolutely the right decision. He made the only decision he could make. I mean, in, in 999 out of 1,000 cases in New York City, I mean, if you prosecuted for battery, everybody who grabbed someone else's arm, you'd have to make 1,000 arrests on Fifth Avenue every morning as people wait for the subway. I mean, nobody would have prosecuted that unless it was a celebrity case. Nobody would even be looking at that uh, if it weren't a celebrity case. I think he made the only decision he could. Mark, Trump's critics call this an incident part of a pattern. Is it? 
Well, the look, uh, Donald Trump. Well, Veer is on the edge of violence. Now, I agree. Oh, Mark, come on now. Veer is no, no, on the his, edge of violence. Come his, on, his, his rhetoric leads people to violence. Now, now I'm, not prove, saying, prove I'm not saying they you shouldn't have prosecuted. Show me a proof. Do you have any proof? I, I agree they shouldn't have prosecuted. Yes. When What's he, the proof? Well, when he says, I will, I will pay for the legal defense of somebody who knocks and that, somebody out. And that's out, all it takes that's to lead a people problem. to violence. That's a problem. I've never okay. heard any other politician say something like okay. that. All right, let's move on to the Democratic debate. On Thursday, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders sparred over familiar issues and a few new ones. The debate included foreign policy. Clinton defended the Obama administration's intervention in Libya. Sanders accused her of mistakes there that encouraged Islamic extremism, but they agreed, surprise, surprise, with the position first outlined by Donald Trump. So I would not be embarrassed as president of the United States to say to our European allies, you know what? The United States of America cannot just support your economies. You've got to put up your own fair share of the defense burden. It is important to ask for our NATO allies to pay more of the uh, cost. Uh, there is a requirement that they should be doing so, and I uh, believe that uh, needs to be enforced. Jack, did this exchange surprise you? No, it, it goes back to one of my predictions that came true. Most of mine, Morris, as you know, don't. But one of them is we may see in the next 14 months, 12 to 14 months, a party in the United States that merges far left and far right. Far left and far right agree on more than they disagree. Uh, European military spending is one of those issues. Trump agrees, Sanders agrees. I agree that the Europeans do nothing for their own defense. I mean, they're like crybaby adolescents. Uh, you're seeing fusion of far left and far right. This, this, this is the difference between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. So our allies have been paying more and more of the burden, and Hillary Clinton has been quietly working to make sure that happens. I'm confident she'll continue to do so. But this idea that we're going to leave the NATO alliance if we don't get every penny paid for is a ridiculous one, and she made that clear. All right, Mark, stepping back, though, from the NATO issue, there's an interesting dynamic at play here. Clinton is light years ahead of Sanders when it comes to foreign policy experience, but he wants to stake a claim to the moral high ground. So I'm curious... Who does that imbalance favor, Mark? Well, look, Hillary Clinton clearly knows what she's doing. Uh, she's She has done this, as, as you say, I mean, first lady and senator and secretary of state. She knows the foreign leader. She's ready to hit the ground running. She, as she pointed out, she negotiated the ceasefire in Gaza. And I think Bernie Sanders lives a little bit in a dream world where everyone can hold hands and get along and you magically wave your wand and get peace in the Middle East. Well, it's true, not he, voted, he voted against Iraq and Hillary was in favor of Iraq. Jack? They've done a good job. I think, look, each of these Democratic candidates has done a good job carving out a certain position. Hillary Clinton has carved out the centrist position, if you want that. Bernie Sanders has carved out the leftist position. The big advantage, it occurred to me watching this debate last night, the, the big advantage that Hillary Clinton has is that she is a leftist who became a centrist. So there will be enough liberals who are She's not a leftist. She's a liberal with Jack. her to elect her. I think that's fundamentally what it comes down to. All right. In fact, Sanders took this moral high ground thing to the Vatican this week. He used the high profile gathering to address what he called immoral and unsustainable wealth inequality and poverty. Once again, Pope Francis is back in the campaign spotlight. So what do you make of this, Jack? You know, I, I think the Pope, the Pope is just itching to get involved in American politics. I'd love to hear these debates in the Vatican between uh, him, the Cardinals, and the advisors. This is, this is a political Pope. It's a smart play by Bernie Sanders. He knows that if he can somehow make it a Catholic issue, maybe he'll get a disproportionate share of uh, Catholics in the primary that'll run to his side. It's a smart move by Mark, Sanders. Mark, do you think the Vatican was a little ticked off at Bernie for turning in this into a kind of a political thing? I think they knew what was going to happen. Look, Pope yeah. Francis and Bernie Sanders agree on a lot of things. They agree on the vast income inequality. They agree on the need to fight climate change. They agree on looking out for the poor. I think it actually highlights Bernie Sanders' issues. It also highlights Pope Francis's issues. I think it's fantastic that they're meeting and working together. All right, before we go, let's look at the week ahead. The Supreme Court will hear oral arguments and a challenge to President Obama's executive actions on immigration. Some analysts think Chief Justice John Roberts will hand Mr. Obama another big year election victory four years after he ruled to uphold Obamacare. Mark, how will this shape the general election contest? 
Well, I, I think the court has two choices. One is, as you say, you could have Chief Justice Roberts, or maybe even uh, uh, Kennedy, join with the liberals to uphold what is clearly an exec uh, using prosecutorial discretion to decide who to deport or not. The other possibility is more interesting, although really harmful for the country, and that's as if there's a 4-4 split. If there's a 4-4 split, it means that the deferred immigration program would not be legal in Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi, which is one of the few circuits that has a great majority of Republicans, but it would be legal in the rest of the country. You So in California, New Mexico, Arizona, they'd be free. You can imagine almost like free states and slave states that's, where you've got ICE basically taking someone and they cross the New Mexico border analysis. and they're home free. The country would be divided, but that's what happens when Republicans don't follow the Constitution. That's and a good analysis. Court justice. That's a correct analysis. What I would add, Morris, is that what Republicans want Remember in politics, what you want is not the result, but the issue. What Republicans want is for this to continue. If, say, Roberts were to come down and, and strike down all of the immigration orders, then it's over. Conservatives no longer have that issue. If you're a political strategist, that's the last thing you want. I don't trust John Roberts very much. There's a big issue with standing here, whether some of these states have standing to file lawsuits at all. Roberts is a moderate. He might, looking, he might be looking for a way out. He might raise the standing issue. I don't think Chief Justice Roberts wants a divided country, which may be why he rules in favor of the administration. Basically, Jack, keep the pot stirring, right? Absolutely. You want the pot for Trump, for Cruz, for whoever the nominee is. Immigration is a big issue. If the Supreme Court wraps this issue up in June, Morris, that's the last thing you want. You have nothing on the ballot in November. You need everything to keep uh, immigration uh, uh, burning. You want some sheriff down on the border to cause problems. You want all of these people to cause problems. That's what if you need If only the for Republicans November. knew how many people that Obama had actually deported, they they might actually support him, but keep the misinformation going, Jack. That's what your party does best. Okay, folks, that's a wrap for us. Mark Levine, Democratic lawmaker, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, the best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank you, Morris. Thanks, Thanks Mark. Jack and Morris. We keep